felt. Empowering Life started before I joined the company, but it's certainly something that I felt exists in the organization. Well, we want to get into how that all helps or hinders you in your kind of day job. Let me hand over to Danny and see yeah. you know, if we can talk a little bit about how companies with purpose, organizations with purpose, operate differently around people, if at all. And I would really like to start with just maybe a, a little bit of a broader question. You talked a lot about how the purpose is sort of felt and you're there to make lives better, longer and stronger. Can you give me some examples of how that manifests itself in sort of the day-to-day of Santa Fe? That's a good question. For me, one of the places I felt it a lot is actually been with the COVID crisis. So obviously, you know, we have part of our business, which is focused on vaccines, and we have a couple of vaccine candidates in the in the pipeline. But we're producers of a lot of other medicines for, you know, a lot of other indications. And, you know, it was amazing to me to see the dedication with which people kept, you know, our production levels really high. And we did a great thing inside the company, which was to capture that and share pictures of our colleagues in the manufacturing sites working through the pandemic while many of us were staying at home. So there's been a lot of imagery through this last crisis that I noticed. You know, I joined at a time where there was a real interest in making learning work for the organization. So we did a lot of great learning in the company, but it wasn't necessarily really focused and it wasn't clear, you know, what we were prioritizing and how it was aligned with the strategy. And and as I started kind of working on this idea of Sanof University and, um, you know, I worked with different colleagues around the business and the people involved to kind of come up with a model and an approach, it was so interesting to me that um, whenever I spoke to people and we talked about, you know, what do we want learning to do for the organization? And, you know, just to get a sense of, you know, where the energy was and interest and the need. Often people talked about, you know, we're here to serve the patients, you know, to to get our products out there and, and helping others. So that to me, Danny, was what I felt personally in, in my day to day, that it was something that you know, when we asked questions, it, it consistently came up, you know, and not a lot of people connect <laughs> learning with, you know, how we're making, we're helping people get better and stronger and, and you know, and live longer. So, uh, so that for me was a very tangible example. I think that's really interesting. And um, this is, this is a broader talent discussion, but I'd love to dive that just a little bit. Do you think this mission or this purpose helps you prioritize and focus the programs that you go after? So I would say that while empowering life and this sense of not losing sight of the patient is something that you feel in the organization, I don't know that it's been consistently used as a point of alignment and focus and prioritization. Let me explain what I mean by that. From a performance perspective, Sanofi over the last few years has been, you know, struggling a bit to sort of find its place, I guess is the best way to uh, to describe it. And um, great products, great people. And we had our, our CEO arrived about a year ago, actually, last September, and, you know, came in with great enthusiasm and kind of spent the first 100 days going around the business and really getting to know, you know, getting to know us and getting to know the business and getting to know our customers and the environment. I mean, and he's a very seasoned sort of healthcare industry uh, professional. So obviously he knew the space, but it was fascinating because he kind of came in and said, look, I, you know, this is an incredible, he talked about hidden gems in the organization. He talked about the fact that, you know, he just sees such incredible opportunities and potential in the company and some real expertise and just an ability to do amazing things. And that doesn't always translate in our performance. And so I guess what I would say, Danny, is that there was a purpose there that was clearly alive. Were we using it in a way to really drive our strategy and our business? I'm not so sure. And I think what Paul Hudson, our our CEO, has done since he's joined is really picked up on that and said, we really need to drive our culture and our strategy in the direction that we're maximizing what we have in this company. And so he's actually kicked that off uh, at the beginning of this year 
to really translate that into where are we focused and how are we prioritizing our business going forward? And what's the underpinning culture that we want to have to really support it? And we've become a lot more explicit about that in the last months. So it's still quite new in the organization and it's, you know, and it's being felt because it's resulted in some restructure and also in some sort of reshifting of mindsets, but it's created a lot of energy. And I think that's, at least for the moment, that's something that has been tangible in the company. And and now I would say, yes, we have a lot more. Like if I look at, for instance, my agenda around learning and development and you know how we're supporting our people and our talent in the organization, I can say I'm much clearer about, you know, how are we supporting those behaviors? You know, where are the growth businesses and how are we making sure that we're supporting that um, consistently, but also doing it in a smart way, right? It's it's not just, you know, kind of going after the little things, but really thinking holistically about how we want to support the business. So I guess that that's the long answer to your question. And the short one is, I don't think we were doing such a great job of prioritizing and, and achieving focus through our purpose, but I think now we're starting to. I love that. Yeah, it sounds like you've sort of now started to align some of those internal practices to make sure that the overall purpose of the organization is met. I'm really interested also in, you had a couple of conversations with other leaders and they talk about purpose of the individual as well as purpose of the organization. I'd love to understand a little bit about what you all are doing to help individuals connect to that larger purpose or to align their purpose with that larger purpose. Yeah, that's a really, really good question. And one part of my answer is going to be we are focusing very strongly at the moment on helping people understand and sort of bring to life for them individually where the organization is headed and the behaviors that underpin that. We've tied it to individual purpose because we talk about the fact that culture and thinking and feelings and beliefs that people have driving those behaviors and actions that then give you the results that you're trying to achieve as a, as a company. So when we speak to leaders, we kind of make that distinction. And while the visible part tends to be that action or behavioral side of things, we tie it to values and individual values as much as organizational values. This sounds a lot like a focus on the culture of the organization, perhaps driving a shift in the culture of the organization. Would you say that's part of your kind of role as chief learning officer? So it's definitely part of my role because I think everybody plays a role in shifting culture Mm -hmm. in the organization. My role is to help ensure that we can get any of the support mechanisms, development tools, et cetera, out there that can really kind of bring it to life for people. That's what matters. So I have some incredibly talented people in my team who, you know, spend a lot of time thinking about the different ways in which we want to engage with people with, and I tend to talk about people more than leaders because I think all people are leaders (laughs) in organizations. So I really, you know, I think it's something that really needs to touch everybody. I think lots of people play a role and of course, at the end of the day, you only shift culture if, if everybody's part of it. Got it. All those in the water, as we said at Microsoft. <laughs> I think it's really interesting that you talk of culture, of culture as something that is a result of the actions that, that are existing in the organization rather than the thing that you control. I think a lot of organizations think about culture as it's defined, yeah. it's on the wall, we all know what it is, therefore it's going to happen. But I love the way this NFE is thinking about it as we need to change the internal people systems and help people get to those behaviors that actually will change the culture here. Obviously, COVID has been a huge disruption for the entire world. And I'm interested as organizations are making these changes, sometimes they have to make some pretty difficult trade-offs. Wondering if your purpose alignment and your core talent functions have had to make any trade-offs or have had any challenges with that. I guess it will probably depend who you speak to in Sanofi about trade-offs. I I would say rather than trade-offs, I would talk about priorities and focus because I think, and maybe it's my glass half full (laughs) approach (laughs) to life where you know, there are, there are definitely constraints. You have, yeah, <laughs> there's definitely constraints. 
And not least of which, by the way, is the fact that we are smack in the middle of realigning our organization to be more focused from a business perspective. So that's obviously had, had implications on our structure. We're trying to shift culture uh, as a company. And at the same time, you know, we have the same problem everybody else has, which is we're trying to contain costs. And especially this year, you know, where it, it's an exceptional year. So it, there's constraints we have to work with. And I think that has, Danny, forced us to make decisions about things we want to do versus or things we need to do and that we re- want to do really well, rather than having a massive la- laundry list of things that we want to kind of get out there. And I'll tell you one thing that's been really interesting. Historically, we're an organization that likes to do things really well, really polished. Everything is beautiful and shiny and, you know, and looks fantastic. And then COVID hits and suddenly we're scrambling to get stuff out there. And, you know, we launched Sanofi University, our our corporate university, and literally in a week's time had to shift from an original plan to a right. Everybody's going to be dialing in from their part of the world at home. So what are we going to do to kind of engage people? And you know, was it perfect and polished and beautiful? Mm, probably not, but it was authentic and it was real and it acknowledged what was going on. And, you know, I think it kind of made it more human. And so I think that that's created an opportunity for us to say what really matters and what do we really want to kind of then focus on. And so when people tell me, you know, we have to reduce our budget in l and I say, okay, well, How can we be smarter about where our L&D budgets even sit and who's making decisions about them and how are we making choices for Sanofi rather than leaving things to happen at very sort of, you know, local levels? And, you know, some people would call that a trade off. I call it an opportunity to look at the problem differently and see how we can make it work for us. I, the other thing that I really like about that statement, Celia, is you're you're working with the rest of the organization to solve a much bigger problem than the one that you have right in front of you on your plate. And I think as the pandemic has washed over the world, we're seeing more and more of that. The statement you made about, made about some things being sloppier than you would like them, or maybe not as polished, definitely, definitely resonates with us. love to go into maybe a few more questions about COVID because we think it's very brave that you launched a corporate university during COVID. Tell us what that was like. So first of all, we're sort of in the middle of transitioning towards a holistic corporate university. So there's a couple of principles that we hold for Sanofi University. The first is to help you uh, build the skills that you need for today and for tomorrow. So it's very much focused on skills and how you use the corporate university to kind of identify what's going to help you in your career, in your life, you know, where your interests are. The second principle is learn where and when you want. So obviously, this is all about it being multi-channel and digital and mobile and all of that good stuff. And the third one is for Sanofi by Sanofi. So it's learning that reflects what the company is liking and needing, but it also reflects our own voices. So in some respects, we've been working on those three principles since before COVID, but it almost kind of made them resonate even more because with COVID, everybody's realized the world is changing at unprecedented pace, but now it was like a flip overnight. So it really kind of put a spotlight on how do I think about my skills and, you know, digital skills being kind of one of the things that really started bubbling up in the sense or virtual skills, right? In the sense of how do I suddenly work in a 100% virtual team or the reality of that change? The learn everywhere, you know, when and where you want just became a reality, right? And yes. we have pictures <laughs> no of, yeah, we have pictures of people waiting in the, you know, in the line to get into a supermarket in Indonesia, you know, listening to podcasts or doing an e-learning on their mobile so it just totally became a reality. And then for Sanofi by Sanofi, really, it was about making it real for us. And, you know, it's funny because one of the trends we've seen in L&D is, you know, there used to be a lot of custom built learning that was being done. If we think about the early days, and then we went from there to 
curation. So we bought a lot of off the shelf stuff and tried to weave it together. 